author Paul Leslie Hour, helping people tell their stories. And now, your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. This is the final installment in the series of interviews exploring the world of the parrot heads, the parrot head nation. A parrot head, of course, is a fan of Jimmy Buffett. On this episode of the Paul Leslie Hour, you are going to hear an interview of a man who captured the heart of a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of you listening no doubt knew him. His name was Monty, Monty Toller, commonly called Monty Mon. He was definitely a parrot head, and I would best describe him as a guy who liked to have fun. When we started kicking around the idea of doing a series to interview the fans of Jimmy Buffett and that entire world, there's a lot of singers that sing a similar style of music that the Parrot Heads follow. It was Monty Toller who took that and ran with it. In fact, we gave him the title of creative consultant for this series. This was produced and broadcast 10 years ago the very first Parrot Head Club in existence, the Atlanta Parrot Head Club, was turning 20. Now, they are 30 years in existence, and they're going to be having a big party next month. Sadly, Monty Toller passed away in 2010. If I may get personal for a moment, I would like it if I could share some of my memories of Monty Toller. I met him at a Peter Mayer concert. It was at Eddie's Attic in Decatur, Georgia. And to be frank, I didn't know what to think. As I got to know him better, I came to really, really love the guy. He was continuously supportive of all of my endeavors. He was very supportive of everything I was doing with the interviews and everything else I wanted to do in life, for that matter. He didn't try to pressure me one way or the other. He just wanted to help. Back in 2010, when I decided to walk to New Orleans from Florida, he was the first person to say, that's a great idea. Let me just tell you, not everybody said that. You could imagine what my father thought of this idea. <laughs> At one point, the journey was almost over. I was walking in Louisiana, getting ever closer to New Orleans. I think I might have been in Mississippi, I'm not sure. But I just started having this feeling of, what the hell am I doing? I was really questioning whether I made a difference or not. I was doing this walk to raise money for all of the people in New Orleans who were affected by Hurricane Katrina. Monty to the rescue. I remember him calling me on the phone, and as I walked and talked, Monty just listened. He was very validating in that way. And then he told me how he saw it. And that did the trick. I remember I hung up the phone with him and there was a little more energy, a little more pep in my step as I made my way closer to New Orleans. I only say all of this because although these stories are very personal to me, everyone who met Monty had their own stories about him and they still do. Another thing I remember is every time I talked to him, whether it was in person or on the phone, he always somehow mentioned how much he loved his wife. And even the times he was in a bad mood, he would always end with some kind of kind word or optimism, even if it was, well, I'll be feeling better tomorrow, or, well, hang in there. So here's the Monty Toller interview where he discussed one of his favorite topics, parrot heads. He got so much out of being involved in the Atlanta Parrot Head Club, the service, and everything that went with it. If you want to know more about what Monty Toller was like, I suggest you listen to the song Larger Than Life that Michael Eagleson recorded. Take a bow, Monty. I'm sorry this song had to end. Now it is with great pleasure that we present you with the final interview of The Magic of the Music, The Birth of a Parrot Head Nation, the one and only Monty Toller. It is with great pleasure that we welcome Monty Toller. So my first question for all of our listeners out there in the parrot head world, who is Monty Toller? No one in particular, <laughs> but uh, 
I started the Houston Galveston Paradise Club back in 1993, co-founded with a dear friend Cynthia Stokes. That grew rapidly. I became involved with the Atlanta Paradise Club the next year in '94 after I met Scott Nickerson, and we quickly became great friends. He had asked me to uh, do some assistance with uh, a new organization that he wanted to start called Paired Heads in Paradise. The Paired Head Nation was growing exponentially to the fact that he couldn't keep up. So he asked me to assist, and uh, in a very long story, somewhat short, uh, I assisted with uh, writing the bylaws, creating the five positions, and I was the original director of conventions in 1995. It just grew from there until 1999 when I actually moved to Atlanta for a career purpose and had many friends here and uh, just saw some explosive growth amongst both the Atlanta Club and the uh, the Parrothead Nation. And we're talking about the years 2004 to the present. What are the defining moments for this era in the Parrothead Nation? A couple of really interesting things happened in this period. Um, there was a what I'm going to call a revitalization with Buffett himself when he and Alan Jackson came out with Five O'Clock Somewhere. I'm not saying there was a demise beforehand, but that song revitalized the Parrothead Nation and International to an unbelievable degree that even both of the artists have admitted that they didn't see it coming as big as it was. And so the parking lot parties became bigger. The clubs started to grow again. Membership started to grow again. Uh, the charity work started to grow again. Specifically in this time frame was with the Atlanta Paradise Club, we, uh, we once again really set the precedence of, of charity work. And that became with an organization called the Atlanta Two-Day Walk. This was an offspring of the... Uh, Avon three-day breast cancer walk that uh, when it shut down, a wonderful woman who's a two-time survivor named Randy Passoff, uh, the very next year managed to put on the walk, and it was a two-day instead of a three-day, but uh, the majority of the volunteers were from the Atlanta Paraday Club, and to this day, she acknowledges proactively that this would not exist without the Atlanta Parrot Head Club and what we do as a volunteer organization to bring this event and make it happen. The uh, the beautiful thing about this uh, with the Atlanta part is that we both support the reinvigorated three day walk, which is an international organization, but the Atlanta two day walk, all of the money goes to breast cancer survivors research and assistance within the Atlanta area. And that has been a very significant event of which we're very proud of. There are several people that claim the term party with a purpose. We don't care who came up with the term, but Atlanta continues to be the leader in party with a purpose, both in having a good time as what a Paradise club is, is, what we think should be, wants to be, but also giving back to the local environment and the culture and the uh, community what was the original vision of Scott Nickerson. Why do you do this? I think that my answer would be that of the thousands, tens of thousands of parrot heads that go out there and party with a purpose. It's that we like the, the, the lifestyle and the music the new terminology is trap rock. The one thing that I want to say is that we're not a Jimmy Buffett fan club. We appreciate Jimmy Buffett and would thank him for giving us the inspiration. But that tropical lifestyle that he sings about and writes about is uh, was the inspiration of our getaway. The professionals and the from the, from the doctors to lawyers to the blue collar workers to the guy that even has to dig a ditch here and there is it somewhat of escapism, even if it's for a weekend or if it's putting on the headphones and just to get the stress away. We do it for two reasons. We do it because we like that lifestyle that his music brings to us, and we also do it because we like to give back to the community that has given us so much. Even in these times of recession, 
we've seen some amazing outreach. For instance, a new one that we're doing right now is to help the victims down in Australia with those horrific fires that they've had. We're collecting thousands of clothing items to ship down to Australia to make sure that they have something to wear, not unlike what happened at 9-11 plus cash. So why Jimmy Buffett fans? What it is a what is it about his fans, do you think in particular, that make them want to take things to this level? Because if you think about it, there are plenty of musician fan clubs out there. Some of them do charitable work, but I believe that the parrot heads are completely and totally in a class by themselves. You never see any club that is to this fervor and to this involvement. Why? I think because of the Parrot Head Nation and Party with a Purpose, we originated bringing music and community together. I'm sure that's happened with other artists and things in the past, but nothing to the level that we can bring that people want to say, hey, this is a lot of fun and I really want to join that. We do little things like the Alzheimer's walk. We'll go and we'll do the walk and have fun with it and do that benefit. It's jovial, but it's also the friendships and the connections that are made amongst parrot heads. Some of the most interesting comments about parrot heads that have been friends over the years is they say, no, we're not parrot heads when people from the outside look in. It is we met because of parrot heads, but we're friends above and beyond that. And I'll give you a specific. If I go to Australia and if I am anywhere near Queensland, if I do not call call Noble – who started the Australia Club, and tell him I'm in town and tell him what hotel I'm in, he will say, cancel that. You're staying with me in my guest room. I've never met him. We've spoken several times over the phone. But it's the same way in Honduras and Canada and uh, the U.K. You have friends around the world, whether you've met them directly or not, whether you've been to a convention or not, it's the camaraderie that brings this Parrothead Nation to fruition and will continue to grow. As you've just mentioned, the Parrot Head Nation has spread and become the Parrot Head World. There are Parrot Head Clubs in all these other places, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia. So my question is, it started here in Atlanta, and that's what we've been exploring on this series, The Magic of the Music. Why Atlanta, of all places? It was a simple vision. It was interesting that early in the day, When Timothy Schmidt, with Jimmy Buffett on stage, coined the phrase parrot heads by looking at the audience, saying they look like a bunch of deadheads in parrot suits. They look like parrot heads. And Jimmy Buffett put that over the microphone, and boom, it started to explode then. The vision that Scott Nickerson had, I mean, it was years and years after that, and people were going to concerts and dressing up and having their weekend fun and their escapism. The next level was a visionary musician named Scott Nickerson that simply looked around. It could have been anybody. If it hadn't been Scott, maybe it happened years later, maybe not. But the fact is, it was Atlanta, and it was Scott that looked around at a tailgate and said, this is so much fun. I want to take this environment year-round, and I want to benefit the local community. And he put out a small ad in a local magazine. Some people showed up. There was a three-day underwater monopoly contest. And it just exploded from there. And what's interesting is he never envisioned it would be more than a couple of friends having fun like he was having at a tailgate party and go from there. The explosion that happened was beyond as wild as dreams. And now it's 20 years from his initial dream. It survived. It's lived on. 20 years from April 1989. Why do you think this has survived? It survived because of a vision. You got friends that come and go. You got families that come and go. You got parrot heads that come and go. With the 20th party, we're looking forward to seeing a bunch of friends that are coming from around the city, around the state, and around the country, and some even out of the country, to come as a reunion and think of it as a family reunion. There are people that were very active early on, that life got in the way, and they couldn't be as active as they used to be. It regenerates. The interesting thing, and even Buffett has said this in his album covers and in his interviews over the past couple of years, he never thought 
that it would be going this long with his music, and he can't believe that he's seeing Parrot Head's grandchildren at tailgate parties and at the concerts, and it blows his mind that it's happening now with grandchildren. It's not indifferent or with the Parrot Heads and the Parrot Head Nation. It is going to t- continue to proliferate because of the friendships that are made, because of the camaraderie, because of the music, not only of Buffett, what is now known as Trop Rock, and the other artists that have been inspired because of what he's done to continue the magic of the music that he did. And it's made an incredible impact on the world. And it's interesting because some of the parallels that happen in the Parrothead Nation seem to correspond with what he's doing. The Parrothead Club's his music is spreading to these different areas and inspiring these people to get involved in the Parrothead clubs. And then meanwhile, he's playing in Paris, France. There's talks of him playing in London and in Amsterdam this year. But as far as the clubs, why do you think that the Parrothead clubs have spread from Atlanta to these other international locations? A couple of reasons. It goes with the spirit of enjoying it. And for instance, my story is the same story of so many hundreds of founders and presidents that have started clubs. In my case, in 1993, I went to a concert, had so much fun. I came back with a dear coworker friend, Cynthia, and I said, there's got to be some kind of a fan club. This is too good to have so much fun. How do you find out? I said, well, I'll call Margaritaville. Looked up Margaritaville in Key West. And they said, no, there's no official clubs, but there are some Parrothead clubs springing up. You can contact a guy named Scott Nickerson in Atlanta, or there's two clubs in Texas, in Dallas and Beaumont. And I said, okay, well, then how do you start one? They said, okay, contact these people. So I did. That was my demise. (laughs) No, it, it has been a labor of love the entire time. It's been a lot of hard work, but it's been a lot of fun. And people do it for that labor of love to just enjoy not only the escapism, but the camaraderie, like I've said, and benefiting the local community and the environment. And internationally, it's because Buffett's music goes international because he speaks so much of the Caribbean lifestyle, of that changes in latitudes, these things that provide people, especially in the north and northeast, you know, when you're packed in with ice and snow, and you need to escape, then it, 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 it provides you, even through music alone, that ability to go with it. Then you find other people that feel the same way you do. Then you find that you can go together and have an iced tea or a beverage of your choice and get together. And next thing you know, here are some uh, people that need some help because their house burned down and we want to help them. That's where the party with a purpose has gone in, first nationally and then internationally. It's, it's very contagious because it is the core of the goodwill of human beings. And, and it thrives in Parrot Heads, that goodwill. Very insightful answer. What do you hope happens in the future with the Atlanta Parrot Head Club now that you're sitting at a 20-year mark? Short and long term, as I've said, I think that the Parrot Head Nation and International is going to continue for a very long time. Because it's the spirit of the music, it's the goodwill of the people, and why we're here is not to go to a concert. For instance, uh, there were several years ago that for the first time in many years that Buffett did not come to Atlanta. Well, instead of being discouraged and despaired, the Atlanta Parrothead Club is the first, and to my knowledge, the only club in the world that threw one of the largest tailgate parties in the country without a Jimmy Buffett concert being present. (laughs) We we did a great tailgate party, and we uh, did some donations for some local charities and had a great time with it. So as it goes forward, could we preserve Buffett to play another 100 years? Yeah, well, sure, we'd love to. But when he hangs up his guitar, I really think that uh, it's not going to be a demise to the Parody Clubs because we do not survive based upon Jimmy Buffett concerts. We survive 
because of the music and the magic that he has written and inspired us. And music never dies. It's with us forever. And it will continue with generations. There are many wonderful artists out there that have continued. As much as Jimmy Buffett inspires us currently, I think that we're going to continue to see the proliferation of the Parrothead Nation and International long after he uh, hangs up his guitar. When you look back at the years that you have been a Parrothead, do you have a favorite memory or favorite memories? I will tell you, as an organizer, and I guess as an artist, will oftentimes do their work and their music, and they wait till at the end of it to look at the crowd to see that they enjoy themselves. Uh, one of my favorites was the hardest I ever worked with the Barrett Heads was I director of conventions in 1995, and I finally got to sit back, relax, and see everyone enjoying themselves. And one of the popular ones was uh, I hired Captain Tony to come up from Key West and address the crowd, and he mesmerized those 900 people. At the same time, it's all the little things. When I work for the uh, the A2D breast cancer, and I'm able to make sure that the walkers get their nutrition and, and get their hydration, and just n- seeing them cheer and seeing a job well done, and the people that are enjoying themselves, and oftentimes uh, you know, one of my favorites is uh, discovering a, a, a lone artist like Jim Asbell when he was literally going to quit the business and he was discovered by one of our friends, Frank McInvale. And now he's going to be playing the stage. You know, he's, he's a nice artist. Um, it, it's a lot of the little things in the parrot heads that, uh, that make you feel good. That really builds up, that makes it all worthwhile. Why do we keep coming back and punishing ourselves with all this hard work? Well, it's the satisfaction of a job well done that someone had a smile on their face at the end of the night and enjoyed themselves. We have to touch on the fact that you also got a message from Jimmy Buffett at some, at one point. I'm with the uh, United States Navy reserve. I was recalled to active duty with the United States construction battalion known as the Seabees in Fallujah, Iraq from 206 and 07. I made a tiki hut because my wife put out through the Tokenut Telegraph I said, hey, send a few decorations because we need to spruce this place up a little bit. So with some camouflage netting and some creativity and some a lot of borrowed parts, we made this this rather large tiki hut and music was provided. A lot of CDs came in from the Texas Music Association and uh, we came up, there were several other paired heads that were officers and we came up with the Strand on the Sandbar Parrot Head Club. Non-sanctioned, of course, but again, it was fun nonetheless. Thanks to Don Walker of the Galveston Bay Parrot Head Club, who talked to Sheila with Margaritaville. Talked to Jimmy, said, hey, here's a guy you maybe never met named Monty Toll. He's over there serving our country right now, and he can't be at Meeting of the Minds this year of 206. And he was on tour and doing some other videos. So what Jimmy did was send me a greeting, a personal greeting to say, hey, Monty, sorry you can't be at me in the mines this year. We know you make it all the time. We really appreciate what you're doing over there. Thank you for all you've done. And with that, we dubbed and created the Margaritaville Camp Fallujah, Iraq. And they found out about that later on and just laughed their goofiness off. (laughs) Uh, Likewise, uh, Buffett and Margaritaville and – with the Parrot Head Nation International, uh, there's a very large compound over there called Al Assad. With the sanctions of Margaritaville, there's a large two day party every other year. Uh, it's a big Buffett pool party in Al Assad. And it's a, it's a huge escape for these men and women of all branches to escape, have some burgers and dogs, put on some lays and some flippers, and just enjoy life. That's because of the Parrot Heads. Margaritaville doesn't sponsor this. It's the Parrot Head Club started with Atlanta that sponsor this and send all these boxes of goodies over to our troops fighting overseas to allow them a few moments of escapism. And it's just an unbelievable sight. 
On April 4th, which is this week, there's going to be a celebration, a concert, and a benefit, all in one. And we're going to be celebrating 20 years of the very first, the original Parrothead Club, the Atlanta Parrothead Club. Tell us about April the 4th. It's going to be quite the celebration. Uh, the, the strongest ticket sales that we've had have been out of the state and even some out of the country. It's going to be a reunion. It's going to be a, an amazing event with several great bands. This is like what I like to say our company picnic, much like what I say Meeting of the Minds is. We are doing this to celebrate ourselves and to celebrate 20 years of the Atlanta Parrot Head Club. But our nature as Parrot Heads, we have the opportunity to benefit with Atlanta Food Bank. Because we have this opportunity, we are taking our celebration and we choose to be to use our resources to benefit, especially in these times when many food banks are going bone dry, as churches as well, to help benefit our community. And it goes full cycle back to why we started this organization 20 years ago. We're not having this event to benefit the food bank. We have already gone and helped the food bank with their situations. That's why I'm so proud of all of our friends and parrot heads of our group is that we are taking the opportunity to get together, socialize, but we have the opportunity also to benefit and bring in our resources and make this all happen. It has grown to be what's now going to be monumental. We're going to be live on the internet with radio, with uh, uh, jimmydreams.com, and that's going to be broadcast to the world. It's going to further show that party with a purpose. We're here for the music. We're here for the magic. We're here for the friendship, the camaraderie, and we're here to teach people it's real easy to get together, have fun, and benefit your local community. I have two final questions. Credit is due to Monty Toller. The entire concept of the magic of the music, the birth of a Parrothead Nation, where we've been exploring and chronicling the history of the original Parrothead Club, the Atlanta Parrothead Club. It was his idea, and he served as creative consultant throughout this series. Why did you decide that we needed to do this? Well, first of all, thank you very much. It was all I did was take a culmination of a lot of people's ideas and finally put the stake in the ground and say, let's just do this. A lot of it has been with my deep involvement with the Parrot Heads and Parrot Heads in Paradise. Uh, one of the things lacking in this has been no one has been working as a historian. And I've even looked at the, the concept. I went so far as to do research with Margaritaville. And you can see a lot of stories, but you can't really track the history of the Parrot Head Nation before Atlanta and even from the last 20 years with the Atlanta Club, what happened? How did this happen? How did this chain reaction occur after Atlanta? And I just finally want to say we need to somehow put this together. And so it will continue and people will enjoy it. And that was simply my inspiration was to bring together talent, because I have none, <laughs> and and try to get this as a fun story for now and to have this as a history of the Atlanta Parrothead Club and what happened and why the Parrothead Nation and PHIP exists. Thank you very much, Monty Toller. My final question, this broadcast is going out all over the world. What would you like to say to all those people that are listening in? I would first like to give a shout out. Another original thing with the Atlanta Parade Club Nation that's happening April 4th that's never done is we're actually with our 20th anniversary celebration in Tulsa, Oklahoma with some friends because they couldn't make it. They're actually going to have a remote celebration and they're going to do a donation for the local food bank. They're going to be listening live and they're going to be celebrating us remotely over in Tulsa. So shout out to you guys. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Melissa Price, for helping to uh, put that together. And the last part is from uh, around the world. We who have uh, started some of these things and helped proliferate it, on Honduras, uh, the Parrot Heads, United Kingdom, thank you for the T-shirt. <laughs> Canada, New Zealand, Australia, thank you for what you do and what you do locally and uh, just party with the purpose. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate you having me. Music included in this episode of the Paul Leslie Hour was from filmmusic.io, the song Sad Trio by Kevin McLeod. You can visit his website at incompetech.com. Music used by a Creative Commons license. Pop, pop, doodly, zing, bang, doodly, knock, cock, cheap, da, boo. Bippity, pot, a, cut, a, she, da, po, pop, bed, a, like, a, tee, and, look. Oh, boy, get a, 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 get